This is A History of Western Thought, episode number five on Empedocles. Much of the previous philosophical discussion that we have talked about on here had to do with the questions of change and permanence. And as we've seen, various different philosophical schools have given different answers to the questions of change and permanence. Heraclitus opted to argue that reality was composed primarily of becoming rather than being. Everything was constantly in a state of flux. The only consistency is Zeus or the fire that underlies all things. The Eleatic school that we looked at last time opted for the opposite perspective, to say that change is really just an illusion and everything in reality remains the same. And through a number of arguments, it was demonstrated that change is indeed illogical, and they argued, therefore, an impossibility. Now, it it goes to the next generation of philosophers to begin to figure out the realities of how these two ideas can somehow work together. Because really, it should be, and it is a given for most people, that change does indeed really occur in the world. It's hardly convincing to tell somebody that there is no change, that they're not really moving, that the world is not changing around them, when in fact it is the entirety of their experience. However, one cannot just opt for a completely Heraclitan view that the only thing that exists in reality is change, because we know that there has to be some form of permanence, After all, the identity of the self is a kind of permanence which we are acutely aware of. And so Empedocles is really the first philosopher who takes these two ideas and tries to somehow make sense of them, to say that there is some truth in what both groups of philosophers were arguing. Now Empedocles was born around 494 BC in Agrigentum, and he spent his life teaching and writing. He often wrote in poetic form to get his ideas across. Now, Empedocles was convinced of the arguments from Zeno and others that being could not become non-being. So there had to be a kind of being that was absolutely consistent and eternal over all times and all places. However, he wasn't willing to go all the way that these other philosophers did to say that change does not happen at all, because change is really just an obvious aspect of the reality that we all experience day after day. So we'll start by discussing Empedocles' understanding of being, and then we will look at his notion of change or becoming in the world. And as we've said, Empedocles believed that being is something that is permanent and unchangeable. But unlike earlier philosophers, he doesn't argue that being is only to be spoken of in one sense. Other philosophers argued that things like fire or air or water were those unchangeable substances which made up all of reality. And Pentacles, instead of arguing for the priority of one of those substances, instead he argued that there are four substances that make up all things. These are the four elements that we are very familiar with, air, fire, water, and earth. And this distinction is one that's very prominent in the Western world after this. Now, Empedocles believed that these four essential elements made up absolutely everything that exists. The elements themselves are always unchanging. And one element cannot become another. Wind cannot become air, cannot become fire, cannot become earth. They are always distinct and separate. And these elements are unchanging and eternal. So if that is the case, then how does Empedocles account for the fact of change in the world? Well, he argues that change is about the mixture of these substances as well as a separation of these substances from each other. So the closer these various elements are to one another, they make up certain objects in the world. And as they move apart from one another or are separated from one another, those objects move. And so in this way, he argues that the underlying elements themselves do not change. But since they are in a kind of process of motion or attraction as well as separation, they can cause what appears to us to be change in the world. Now, there's a logical question, then, that one would ask here, and that is, how exactly are these static and eternal elements in motion at all? How is it that they can attract to one another, mix together, as well as separate from one another? What is it that's causing those things to happen? Because themselves, they are motionless and mindless, so they cannot do this. Empedocles argues, then, that there has to be some kind of force to both bring the elements together as well as separate them. And to do so, he brings in two very constant elements in human life which have these effects, and those are love and strife. 
Love, of course, brings two individuals together, and he argues then that this is a broader principle of the universe, that love is what brings things together, these various elements, and is the cause of mixture. Strife, on the other hand, does the opposite. It is an instrument of separation. And so love and strife are these two different aspects of reality then that govern the nature of the mixture of the four basic elements of reality. And love and strife cause this constant circle, this constant cycle in reality of things being together and then separated and then coming back together in love. Now, Empedocles' ideas really were not even consistent with some other ideas that he held. He was a bit of a religious thinker. He believed in things like the transmigration of souls. Of course, the notion of a soul that can transfer from one body to another does not really fit with his otherwise more materialist understanding of the world, where everything is made up of these four elements. Since we really don't have an extensive record of his writings, it's possible that he had some other ideas and ways to make these things consistent with one another, but we cannot be sure. So what's the importance of Empedocles for us today? Well, hardly anyone is going to buy into the exact nature of his philosophy. In and of itself, it's not like he had some large school of thought and a bunch of people followed what it was that he said. However, what's really important in Empedocles' writings is this. He knew that both of the schools of thought, of both the Eleatics and Heraclitus, had aspects of truth. In some sense, there was change in the world, and in some sense, there was stability in the world. And what we find here is the first attempt at achieving a solution. And even though his solution might not be the best one, and it's not one that most people today would opt for, it is something that was necessary and is going to guide the next philosophers that we get to in our study. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this, check out the rest of the series, and please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.